Good morning. Today we are reporting 3,402 new cases of COVID-19 in Pennsylvania. On Sunday, we had 2,909 new cases. That brings the total number of COVID-19 cases in Pennsylvania to 234,296. As our data shows over the last number of days, this includes more than 4,000 new cases reported on Saturday. We are now seeing the highest case counts of, COVID, of the COVID-19 pandemic across Pennsylvania that we have seen since the beginning. This is a sobering look at our current reality as COVID-19 continues to impact our state and our country. What we are seeing in Pennsylvania is a direct reflection of what is occurring across the county in almost every state. Of those cases, 73% are now considered recovered, meaning that it has been more than 30 days past the patient's positive test or onset of symptoms. That number will naturally decrease with the high number of new cases. And remember, we continue to see many people who are considered COVID-19 long haulers, where a true recovery may take months as they continue to deal with symptoms of the virus. Today, we are reporting 1,735 individuals are hospitalized in Pennsylvania due to COVID-19. This number has been steadily climbing and has increased significantly even over the last week. Last Monday, I reported 1,267 individuals hospitalized due to COVID-19. So that's an increase of 500 patients in a week. So this is a call to action for everyone in Pennsylvania. COVID-19 is right here, and we are at a critical point. We all need to take steps to prevent the spread of this virus. And if we don't, we put ourselves, our families, and our communities, and our health systems at risk. So I am calling on all Pennsylvanians to answer the call to stop the spread of this virus. Each of us needs to follow the recommendations from public health professionals at all levels, nationally including Dr. Fauci, the CDC, the Surgeon General, and others. We need to wear a mask. We need to practice social distancing. And we need to download the COVID Alert PA app. We can get through this. We can get through this. But it requires each of us working together, united, regardless of other differences. Another concerning trend that we have been observing is an increase in the percent positivity, both statewide and in counties. And that's occurring across the nation. The statewide percent positivity, as reported on our early warning monitoring dashboard, is nearly at 7% statewide. Last week's percent positivity was 6%, so it unfortunately continues to rise. And that is one indicator of how we know that the increase is not just due to increased testing, it's due to increased number of cases of COVID-19 in our counties and in our Commonwealth. 52 counties have percent positivities above 5%. That's 12 more counties than last week. We also closely monitor the number of people who have reported going to a business or a large gathering 14 days prior to the onset of symptoms. For the week of October 25th through 31st, only 21% of people that were asked answered the question about whether or not they frequented a business or a large gathering. This percentage, unfortunately, continues to decrease. More and more people are not providing the information that we need as part of our case investigations. Of those that answered the question, 609 said that they had been to a business establishment, and more than half had said they had been to a restaurant in the 14 days before they got sick. 618 had said they had been to a mass gathering in the 14 days before they got sick. I cannot stress enough how absolutely critical this information is and how important it is for people to answer the call, to participate fully, 
in the case investigation and contact tracing process. As you know, we have the COVID Alert PA app, which assists us in alerting Pennsylvanians that they have been exposed to someone who has tested positive for the virus. I encourage you today to join the more than 431,000 Pennsylvanians now who have added this app to their phones and have answered the call to fight COVID-19. You can download this from Apple or Google stores. It's compatible with Apple phones and Android phones. And it's really, really important to help us stop the spread. We all have a collective responsibility to protect ourselves, our families, and our communities, and our most vulnerable Pennsylvanians from COVID-19. We can control the spread of this virus, but it will require each of us doing our part. Even if you think you will not get the virus, it's important to think about those who would get very sick if they get the virus. Think about how this virus has impacted those that were younger and previously healthy but have had serious medical conditions. We have seen young children, about 60 cases now, who have MISC, or multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, and have been hospitalized and become very sick and taken care of by our excellent children's hospitals and other health systems. Think about vulnerable seniors, including our parents, our grandparents, Senior citizens, no matter where they are living, are at greater risk from exposure to this virus. The impacts can be deadly. We have seen this. The majority of our deaths have been in those 60 and older. Think about our healthcare workers who care for those seniors. We need to protect those frontline workers by taking the necessary steps that we know, that we know will prevent the spread. COVID-19 does not discriminate. No one is invincible when it comes to the potential impacts of this virus. The steps that we would take together, united, will protect ourselves, our families, and our communities. And so it starts by answering the call. If you test positive when a case investigator reaches out to you, answer the call, literally answer the phone call, and participate in the interview. The case investigations are completely confidential. They are completely anonymous. You might just save a life by being honest during those case investigations. If a contact tracer reaches out to you, again, literally, answer the call, answer the phone. They may tell you that you need to stay home and quarantine for 14 days, but you can save a life by following those directions. And you are all, we are all, to, together, united, answering the call when we wear a mask, when we wash our hands, when we social distance, when we avoid large and small gatherings, and we download the COVID-19 app. We must all stand united in our fight, our collective fight against COVID-19. And as always, stay calm, stay alert, and stay safe. Thank you. I'm pleased to answer questions. Yes. Has anyone from the Biden administration reached out to the state uh, Department of Health or Wolf administration perhaps about any new guidelines? He has talked in the past about mask mandates at this point. To date, no. And if I could follow sure. up, you've talked in the past about community spread of COVID-19. Can, can you be more specific as we see these increasing numbers? Sure. Which communities and where you're tracing some of this increase. Sure. So um, we are seeing community spread throughout Pennsylvania. Um, we have now 47 counties on our sort of watch list in terms of increasing cases. And 54 out of 67 counties um, have had increasing number of cases over the last week. So this is in every region of Pennsylvania and almost every county of Pennsylvania. So we frequently will do what we call a deep dive into those counties and to see where the increases are coming from. And we'll see some trends. We might see an increase in a school or a college. We might see increases at a correctional institution or a long-term care living facility. Um, but what we're mostly seeing is that there is just community spread, that we can't pinpoint it to one activity or to one location. It is just prevalent in the community and it's spreading in 
the community. And that's why the mitigation efforts that I'm discussing, such as the masks, such as the hand washing and the social distancing is so important everywhere in Pennsylvania to stop the spread. Yes. Dr. Levine, hello. Hi. And uh, I was wondering, the Department of Education has told WITF they don't plan to change their guidance for schools. And have you been part of those discussions? And can you explain the rationale with that decision as case numbers in PA are now higher than they were when schools closed in March? Sure. Um, so um, I'm not sure it's completely correct that we're not going to adjust our, our guidance in schools. We discuss this with uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Health and the Pennsylvania Department of Education on a, on a regular basis. We do not plan, absolutely do not plan to have a general school closure as happened in the, in the spring. But we might continue to make Make adjustments in our recommendations to schools. Remember, all the, the, the guidance and recommendations are just that. They are not orders, and it, there's local control in Pennsylvania, and those decisions are being made by local authorities. Yes? Do contract tracers leave a message and return number? A lot of people, you know, over the past week haven't been answering their phones because of, you know, sure. calls, things like yes, that. Yes, they will, they, they will leave a message. Um, but, um, you know, we really want people, to, if at all possible, to answer the call the first time. But I understand that that's been challenging in the last week. Yes? How dangerous is this virus still? I know when we look at, you know, the death rates or even the hospitalizations compared to what they were in the spring, people look at it and see that they're lower than what they were, especially the death rate. Um, what do you say to those people who feel that maybe, you know, we have the, the means to care for people, sure. we have the medications to help them kind of deal with that? So um, a number of different points to that question. Thank you. So there is no significant change in the virus in terms of its, um, um, in terms of its impact on the uh, virulence is what it's called. So um, it has not become less, less virulent. Uh, we are seeing significant increases in the rates of hospitalization. We announced 1,735. Uh, again, that's 500 more than in the hospital a week ago. It always takes a lag time, and that happened in the spring as well. Usually about two or three weeks after the increase in the number of patients, you start to see the increase um, in the hospitalizations. And then, several weeks later, you start to see the increasing number of tragic deaths. We are seeing an increase in terms of the number of deaths due to COVID-19 than we saw in the summer. It is not at the rate, thankfully, that we saw in the spring. Uh, we are um, working, we have new programs uh, in terms of long-term care living facilities, the Regional Collaborative Program, or RIC program, which is helping us in those facilities where many of those deaths occurred. In addition, as you pointed out, the Medical care is much better. Uh, we have better protocols in hospitals and intensive care units. We have therapeutics such as remdesivir, dexamethasone, um, and uh, uh, hopefully shortly uh, the EUA from the FDA for the monoclonal antibodies. Those are the medicines that President Trump uh, re received. But there are no miracle cures by any means. But our medical care is better. But with these increasing number of cases, you'll see increasing rates of hospitalizations, and we will see increasing number of deaths. You just look at the Midwest. Just look at the number of deaths that are being seen in Wisconsin and North Dakota and South Dakota and other Midwest and Mountain West states. Um, so this virus is still very, very dangerous. Yes. Oh. I didn't call on you first. I'm sorry. I'll get you. The, the 1,700 hospitalizations, I mean, Again, I'm just trying to get a sense of there are rural hospitals and there are, there's, there's COVID in rural areas across the Do we have any sense that there's maybe small hospitals that are at the brink of being overwhelmed? So uh, our hospitals and health systems are not overwhelmed at this time. Uh, but we have heard that, particularly in the North Central, that, that some of the hospitals are challenged. Uh, but there are no hospitals or health systems overwhelmed at this time. We need to work, and we will be working um, through the Department of Health with those hospitals and health systems to make sure that they are prepared for the increasing number and that they don't get overwhelmed. Yes. Uh, you talked about not going back to a red, yellow, green mm -hmm. phase. Uh, is anything maybe in between being considered as we see other states, New Jersey's uh, imposing new restrictions on bars and restaurants? Utah mm -hmm. has a mask mandate. Uh, are there restrictions being considered right now? Well, I want to highlight, I mean, as I've mentioned many times, there are three ways to address the pandemic, containment, mitigation, and the vaccine. Um, in terms of mitigation, we already have mitigation orders in place. There is a universal masking order in place. There are restrictions in terms of indoor capacity for restaurants 
crowds and on um, and on large ga gatherings indoors and outdoors. So we have mitigation measures in place, and we continue will continue those and continue to enforce them. Yes, Doctor Levine. On that note of vaccines, of course, big news out of Pfizer yes. today. Uh, does that affect your uh, recent announcement about um, how you're prepared? For to, to get a vaccine, even as you were you know, cautious to say when that would be. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to how this new announcement relates sure. to when we're going to see that in PA? Sure. So we don't know exactly when we're going to see it, but it was a very positive announcement from Pfizer uh, that their vaccine has been shown to be very effective. They said up to 90% effective. Uh, they uh, have finished their efficacy studies. They're, they still haven't finished their, all their safety studies. They're anticipating that maybe by the end of November, beginning of December. Um, so the process will be that they will declare that they are done with their studies. Uh, they will submit all of that to the FDA um, and the federal government, which will go through a review process. Uh, by the FDA and uh, the CDC, et cetera. And so our job comes when they say, that's done. And then they will, uh, they will notify us about the distribution. And then we, uh, we stand ready to distribute and administer the vaccine. Now, the Pfizer vaccine is the one that is ultra cold. That's the one that's at minus 70 to 80 degrees centigrade. Uh, and it has to be kept on dry ice or an ultra cold uh, refrigeration unit. So that's going to, that poses challenges. But we've already reached out to hospitals and health systems to be able to accomplish that. So we stand ready to distribute and administer the vaccine in Pennsylvania according to the prioritization set by the federal government when the federal government releases the vaccine. And then just real quick, what about the emergency use authorization? Would there be opportunities where people would be able to access that prior to the general public's ability to, to get it? So um, the, the emergency use authorization from the FDA will release it uh, to, from the federal government to us, and then they'll already have their prioritization recommendations. There's going to be three phases, um, as has been discussed. The phase one is going to be primarily to healthcare personnel uh, of various types. Um, if it's this vaccine, it's going to have to be administered through our excellent health systems that have the capacity to immunize large amounts of people and have those refrigeration uh, capacities, uh, and then we will be facilitating all of that. Then, eventually, then when they release phase two, in phase three, we stand ready to, to act then. I'm sorry to believe it, but I just want to make sure I yeah. understand correctly that through that process, no one will get it before that no. timeline you said. No, no one gets yeah. it beforehand unless they're part of their study. But no, no one uh, through the dist our distribution will get it before that process starts. That's correct. Yeah. A nursing home in Carlisle recently stopped visitation, and I was talking to an assistant um, chief at the EMS department, and he said he was seeing an increase of cases in more nurse nursing homes. So where are we with um, case increase? When it comes sure. To we are starting to see an inc a small increase in terms of the number of cases in nursing homes and other long-term care living facilities. Nothing like we saw in the spring. Uh, we have instituted universal testing uh, in those facilities, and we have retesting protocols both for particularly for staff, but also for patients, depending upon whether they have cases and the um, the incidence of cases in their in their counties. In addition, I've highlighted before the regional collaborative program or the RIC program. I believe the Department of Human Services is actually speaking about that also today. That has been a great program uh, signed by the governor, legislation signed by the governor this summer, implemented by the Department of Human Services with assistance from the Department of Health, where we have great academic medical centers working with these facilities. In central Pennsylvania, that's Penn State Health. In north central Pennsylvania, that's, um, uh, that's Geisinger, et cetera. Uh, and that program has been great and has really uh, aided uh, Department of Health and Human Services in terms of protecting those facilities. Nothing's 100%. The, the prevalence of COVID-19 in those facilities is going to be correlated with the prevalence of COVID-19 in the counties and communities where they're located. But they, they have gone a long way towards protecting the communities. The threat, however, is the long-term funding, and I've mentioned this before. The funding for that program will be done by the end of the year. And so by, by December 31st. So we, we call upon Congress to authorize the CARES Act to further CARES Act funding. And then we, then we call upon the state legislature to authorize, work with the governor's office, office and authorize money to continue that program because that's how we're going to protect those facilities. Yes. Dr. Levine, I'm referencing a recent Associated Press report that kind of confirmed some of what I thought was true anecdotally looking at state data, which is that a lot of rural... Um, 
counties, often Republican-led counties, where there's a culture of not wearing masks, have had some of the highest percentages of COVID cases. But I wonder if the Department of Health or any other uh, state groups have made any efforts to reach out specifically to those counties and groups on some kind of educational effort because you know that kind of stuff is not rocket science it's simple but people are not doing it sure. and they're reinforcing that behavior with one another sure so we have some specific reach out to counties called our c react team or covid react team um, we had announced that we reached out to center county and state college um, earlier we've reached out now we're on our third or fourth county that we specifically reach out to we reach out to uh to local officials and other stakeholders in those communities and do a, a deeper even deeper dive into those communities to work on all of these different factors. So, and those will continue on a regular basis. Um, but this is not a partisan issue. This is not a political issue. This is a public health issue. Wearing a mask, wearing a mask is not a political statement. It's a public health measure to protect yourself, to protect your family, your community, um, and eventually the whole state. So we really want to get past polit the political divide and any partisan divide, and again, stand united and work together to stop the spread of COVID-19 in Pennsylvania, and that's how we'll be successful. Yes. A few weeks back, you mentioned the start of the fall resurgence. Where are we, are we still in the beginning stages? Have we peaked with the fall resurgence? Um, uh, so we don't know exactly how long the fall resurgence becomes the winter resurgence and how long that's going to last. Uh, I'm afraid I, I do not think that we have peaked. Again, I mean, if you look at our curve of increase of new cases, it really mirrors the curve in the country. And if you look at you know, the, the, the challenges that the Midwest is facing, that the Mountain West is facing, but really every state in the, in, the, in the country are seeing increases. The one that until recently was pretty stable was Hawaii. But Pennsylvania is not an island. And so we cannot prevent the spread from other states um, you know, that, that we are contiguous to. And so um, I do not think that we have reached the peak, which highlights the importance of the messages I'm trying to relay today. Yeah. I think for people at home, I think a lot of people think I'm already wearing a mask, I'm social di socially distancing. If we continue with this trend of these increase of cases, what can these people expect? What more can people do sure. who are already following sure. know, the mitigation efforts in place? Well, so th it's a really challenging message now that we're entering November, we're getting close to Thanksgiving and then, and then the holidays with Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. But we are asking people to not... To, 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 to not get together, actually, with their loves and their loved ones and their friends. And I know that's really challenging and it is a sacrifice. But it is not only large gatherings that contributes to the spread, it's actually relatively small gatherings. So we want people to stay within their households uh, for holidays and holiday gatherings and then to, uh, to, to, to really be with their, their extended family and extended um, neighbors and friends remotely. And I know that's really difficult. Dr. Fauci has said exactly the same thing. Uh, but we are seeing small gatherings significantly contribute to community spread, and that's what we're asking people to do. Any further questions? Yeah? Any indication that Election Day had any um effect on some of the increases? In uh, no indication at this time. Of course, the incubation period of the virus is two weeks. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it.